If you're a beginner who's looking to sew indie patterns, this is the video for you. Hi, my name is Sarah and welcome to my channel which is all about sewing and styling a handmade wardrobe. A few weeks ago, I brought you a video that was about big four patterns for beginners. And so this is in part two where I'm bringing you my favorite indie patterns for beginner sewists. I know that a lot of people in other parts of the world do not have access to the cheap big four sales that are at Joanne Fabrics, or maybe you just generally prefer the look of indie designs or want to support smaller companies. So I have a second video of many patterns that I have sewn myself that I'm going to share with you that I think would be appropriate for beginner sewists. Now I am focusing on either free or lower cost patterns. I put the cutoff amount at around $12 USD because I think that when you're just starting out sewing, most people just don't want to invest as much as $20 in a pattern just in case it doesn't work out. So that's not to say that there aren't more expensive patterns that are also excellent for beginners, but I just left them out of this video. Let's just get right to the patterns. Now starting off with tops. Personally, I think that tops are one of the easiest patterns to start with when you're a beginner, so I do have quite a few recommendations for you in both knits and wovens. The first pattern is the Fiber Mood Ayla shirt. It comes in sizes extra small up to 3XL and the cost is $9.50 USD. I think that this is a really good beginner shirt pattern because it has grown on sleeves, so you don't need to worry about setting in a sleeve or putting on a cuff. The sleeves are short. It also has an unlined yoke, so you don't have to worry about learning the burrito method just yet. And really the only tricky part is putting on the collar stand and the collar. I think this is such a quick and easy sew and you can make it in a variety of fabrics. When I made mine, I chose to make it out of a plaid and I think that this is also a really good beginner plaid pattern because there's not a lot of pattern pieces so it makes the matching a little bit simpler and you don't have as many seams to try to match up. The next pattern is the Hey June Handmade Willamette Shirt. This is one of the first indie patterns that I actually purchased and it comes in sizes 2 to 22 and the cost is 10 US dollars. This is another good beginner shirt pattern. I'd say it's maybe even a little bit easier than the Ayla because there's no buttons. The front is actually sewn up and you can pull it on over your head and I think you have the option to put just one button at the top, but you don't even have to worry about putting on buttons and buttonholes. It also has grown on sleeves, but this one has the option to add cuffs or you could just hem them. It comes in three different views and it can also be made in a variety of fabrics. This one does not have a collar stand. It's more of a camp style collar, so I think it's a little bit easier to apply, but it does have a lined yoke. The instructions are really good in instructing you how to do the burrito method. So if you are wanting to try that out and add it to your sewing arsenal, I think that's a really good pattern to try it out for the first time. The next pattern is the Grainline Studio Hemlock Tee. This one is free for newsletter subscribers. It comes in two size bands from 0 to 18 and then 14 to 32. This one is a drop shoulder boxy tee. It comes with different sleeve options from short up to long, and it has different lengths from crop up to tunic length. Now I have made this pattern one time and it's not my favorite, mainly because I found the neckline to be a little bit wider and just not to my taste, but that is clearly a personal preference thing. It has nothing to do with how good or bad the pattern is. And the reason that I chose this particular pattern is because it has a good size range and it comes in a lot of different options. So you can pretty much choose the options that you like in the style of your t-shirt and everybody can find something for them. The next pattern is the Jolly Emily. It comes in sizes F to double G and that's from children's on up to adult sizes. This one is another drop shoulder knit pattern, but it has a turtleneck and it comes with long sleeves only. There's only the one view. Now the reason why I included this pattern in addition to the grain line pattern is because this one comes in children's sizes. So I think that the broad sizing range makes this a really good pattern, even though there's only one style and the style is simple enough that I think that once you get into it, you could start hacking it and changing it up a little bit. I have made this pattern one time and I made it out of a bamboo jersey that was maybe a little bit too drapey for the style. I think it's probably better in a little bit of a heavier knit, like a sweater knit, but the pattern itself is very easy to sew and I think that it's a good pattern for beginners. This next one is the Love Notions Laundry Day Tee, which is free when you sign up for their Facebook group. It comes in sizes extra small up to 5X. This one is diverse because it has a t-shirt and a dress and there's lots of different options in terms of the neckline and the sleeve length. There's a million different free t-shirt patterns out there and they're all a little bit different. I picked this one because it's a little bit more fitted up in the shoulders and then it has a very swingy shape to it. So if you like that style of t-shirt, I think that it's a really good one. I made a workout tee out of it and it works really well for that. That swingy T shape is not really my personal style, but I appreciate that a lot of people in the sewing community like that. So I thought that I would include this pattern in my list because it does come in quite a large size range and I do think that it's a nice pattern. 
This next one I would say is a true beginner friendly pattern. If you've never sewn anything before in your life, you could make this t-shirt. It is the Maria Denmark Kirsten Kimono tee. It's another one that is free if you sign up for her newsletter. It comes in sizes extra small up to 4XL. And the reason why this is so incredibly simple is because I'm pretty sure there's only two pattern pieces or maybe three, I can't remember, but it's basically just a back and a front and then there might be a neckband piece, but I do think you do have the option to just turn it the neckline under and stitch it down. It's another pattern that has grown on sleeves, but it's drafted really well. So the shaping is really quite nice and beautiful. And if you make it out of a slightly drapey fabric, I think that probably shows it off to its best advantage, but you could use something more stable like a cotton jersey if that's what you like. The next one is a free tank top pattern. It's the Paradise Patterns Blama Tank. This one is free when you sign up for their newsletter. It comes in sizes A to L and there's two different bust cup sizes. I have sewn this pattern one time and it's not my personal favorite because I don't like how thick the bands are, but that is obviously a style thing that you may like it or you may not. Lots of people have made this pattern and gotten really good results. I do think that the instructions are really good and because it's a tank top, it's something that you could theoretically sew up in an hour. It's very, very quick and easy to sew. The last top that I have to share with you is the DIBY Club. I'm sharing the kids anything but basic tee, but there is also a women's version and a men's version and all of them are free. The child's version comes in sizes eight months up to 12 years. So I think that's a pretty good size range for a children's pattern. It has two different fits for slim or regular fit. It comes with a crew neck and it has different sleeve options and you can also put on a chest pocket if you want. So I have sewn this pattern for my niece. It is very, very quick and easy to sew. And I do like that it has such a broad size range and you get some different options. And certainly it's a very easy shape so you can hack it as you get more experience. And I do just really like that they offer the same pattern for women and men and all for free. I think that is very generous. And it's the kind of pattern that you could make over and over again for the whole family. Patterns where you can make more than one type of garment, like a dress and a top or skirt and pants, I consider that to be a wardrobe pattern, so that's what this category is. The first one that I have to share with you is from I Am Patterns. It's the rainbow hoodie and dress. In the PDF, it comes in sizes 34 to 52, and the paper pattern comes in sizes 36 to 46, and it's 825 euro for the PDF. Now this pattern is incredibly easy to sew, especially if you choose one of the more beginner friendly options. Like you can do a regular sweatshirt with just a neckband and cuffs, or you can actually make it a little bit more difficult and choose the view that has the center front zipper, maybe do the welt pocket. So it's a really good skill builder pattern. You can choose the more difficult views as you get more experience. This pattern also comes with so many different options. You can do different lengths. You can do it as a dress. It does have different types of pockets and you can do a hood or a regular sweatshirt. I think it's a really versatile pattern that you can get a lot of use of and it's a good value for the money. The next pattern is the Nina Lee South Bank. This one comes in sizes 6 to 20 and a second range in 16 to 28 and it costs 9 British pounds. This pattern has three views. You can do a cropped sweater, a longer sweater with a hemband, or you can do a dress. The dress does have the option to add pockets, but you can leave them off if you choose to. But it's a very, very simple pattern to sew, and it doesn't require any hemming if you do the dress or the longer sweatshirt with the band. So I think that it's really suitable for beginners. It also has a drop shoulder, which is a little bit easier than a set in sleeve for a beginner. And because it's a stretch fabric, but it doesn't require a ton of stretch, you could use a nice stable knit, and I think the experience is going to be very quick and pleasant to sew. The last pattern in this category is the 5 out of 4 resolution. This is a bra and a tank top. It comes in sizes extra extra small up to 3XL, and the cost is $12 USD. Now you do get a lot of different options with this particular pattern. You can make a tank top with a couple of different views, or you can make a sports bra. I have made the sports bra, and for a first time sports bra, I think that it is a really easy pattern because it's unlined. And you insert elastic at the bottom of the band and then just turn it up and stitch it down. So if you are looking to make your own active wear, I think this would be a really good sports bra pattern to start with. Although if you have a larger chest and you need more support, you might want to look into a different pattern that offers a lining. I haven't tried the tank top pattern yet, but it looks also easy to sew. And so I do think this is a good pattern if you are looking to sew exercise gear or athleisure. This next category is for one pieces, dresses, and jumpsuits. Now I do not have a ton of recommendations here, but it's not because there aren't wonderful dress and jumpsuit patterns out there. 
in the indie sewing community it's just that a combination of things i don't sew a whole lot of those things and i also don't tend to sew too many beginner friendly versions of those things but the one i do have to recommend is the first one is the fiber mood julia dress it comes in sizes extra small up to 3xl and it costs 950 usd now this pattern did not work out for me and i ended up hacking it into a top and a skirt but that doesn't mean that it won't work for you the dress is kind of a boxy style dress where it's made out of a woven, it has grown on sleeves, it has a little bit of a wider neckline. And then the waist is gathered with elastic, so you just pull it on over your head, there's no closures, and then it has a nice free flowing skirt that has slits at the sides. There's also a really nice detail in the back where there is a pleat, so it adds that little extra design element and also makes it nice and easy to move. I made mine out of a very fluid ran fabric that was tricky to work with, but you could make it in a fabric that's a little bit more stable and it would be easier to sew. The second pattern that I have to recommend is the Fabric Store Celine Jumpsuit. This is a free pattern. It comes in sizes 0 to 30. And for a jumpsuit, it's pretty simple. It has grown on sleeves, it has an elastic waist, so there's no closures. Although I did add a snap to mine because it has a mock wrap style front, and I put a snap on just to keep it closed, but that's obviously optional. It's a really good pattern for more stable fabrics, so I made mine out of a linen. So I think that it would be an excellent first jumpsuit pattern. You don't have to worry about inserting a zipper. And although jumpsuits are always going to be a little bit tricky to fit, I think that if you are looking to dive into that, that this is a good one to start with. Moving on to pants. I actually have quite a few offerings in this category. So the first one is the Green Style Creations Flare Leggings. It comes in sizes B to M, and the cost is $10.20 USD. It has several different waistband options. It has two different lengths, a capri or a full length, and you can choose to add pockets or leave them off. I made this pattern in a black poly yoga fabric and they are so incredibly comfortable, very quick to sew, and you have the ability to level up your skills if you wanna try one of the trickier waistbands. I just went with the simplest one myself. And the instructions on the pattern are really good and very thorough. So I do highly recommend this pattern if you're looking to sew athleisure. The second pattern is the Paper Cut Patterns Tula Pants. It comes in two size groupings from size 1 to 8 and also from 6 to 14 and they also have a kid sizing range. The price for a single range is $12.65 in USD. Now this is ever so slightly over my price cutoff, but I do think that this pattern is worth it because you get a lot of different options. First of all, the pattern can be made out of either knits or wovens, and there's three different views. So you have shorts view, you have a wide leg pant, and then you have a tapered pant. This pattern has become my go-to elastic waist pants pattern. I think that it's very easy to sew. It has really good instructions and you can actually get a nice professional look because it does have a faux fly. So in my mind, it just kind of levels up a little bit from like your standard elastic waist pants. I definitely think that it's worth it. Paper cut patterns also has sales occasionally, so you might be able to find it for an even cheaper price than this. This is a TNT pattern for me and I would very much recommend it to a beginner. The next pants pattern is the Pattern Emporium Urban Pants. It comes in sizes 6 to 22 Australian and it costs 11 US dollars. This is another knit pant that has several different variations. You can do a wide leg pant, a tapered pant, or a flare leg, and there's also different lengths. You can do it cropped or you can do it full length. These pants all have a yoga style waistband, so you don't need to insert elastic in the waistband, which makes it really, really easy to construct. And I believe there is also an option that you can add pockets if you want to. I recently made these pants for myself out of a really thick sweatshirting fabric. And for the waistband, I used a little bit of a leftover piece of activewear fabric, and they are extremely comfortable and they were so quick to sew. I think that would be an excellent pattern for a beginner. The last pants pattern that I have to share is the Patterns for Pirates Peg Leg Leggings pattern. This is another free pattern. It comes in sizes extra, extra small up to 5X, and I believe it is free as long as you sign up for their Facebook group. I have sewn this pattern for myself a couple of times, and it's very, very simple. I really like how the pattern is very easy to grade between sizes if that is something that you need to do, and it comes in a variety of different lengths all the way from little short shorts down to full length leggings. Leggings are one of the simplest things to sew because there's usually not very many pieces. And I think that the instructions on this pattern are really good. So if you are looking for a leggings pattern, I would highly recommend this one and it's also free. 
Moving on to skirts, I think that skirts are often a really good beginner-friendly pattern because they're usually quite simple. The first one that I have to share is the Sew House 7 Elemental Pencil Skirt. It comes in two size ranges from double zero up to 20 and then from 18 to 34. It's a knit pencil skirt that is finished with an elastic waist facing. So I think that it looks really elegant and polished because it does not have a waistband. It also comes in two lengths, either knee length or midi length. And there's a very small number of pattern pieces. So you have your front, your back, and your facing and that's really it. So I think it's a very, very simple sew. And if you like that style of skirt, I would highly recommend this to a beginner. The second pattern is just slightly more difficult. It's the Little Pomegranate Sabina skirt. It comes in sizes six to 34. And this one is for woven fabrics. It also has an elastic waist, but it does have slash pockets and then an added ruffle at the bottom. So I think that those two elements can kind of level up your skills a little bit. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it for the very first thing that you ever sew, but I definitely think it's appropriate once you've sewn a few garments and you have the hang of it that this is a really simple pattern to level up your skills. It's another one that can be made in a variety of fabrics. I made mine out of a very fluid rayon, but I've also seen it made out of things like cotton and linen, and it's a really nice versatile skirt. And you could easily change it up by leaving off the ruffle, even though that's not technically an option in the pattern. It is a way to make the skirt a little bit different if you're not ready for things like hacking. Moving on to layering pieces. Now for the layering pieces, these are all knits because just generally I find that they are simpler to sew than a full jacket. So the first one that I had to share with you is the Love Notions Boyfriend Cardigan. It comes in sizes extra small up to 5X and the cost is 1250 USD. The pattern has three different necklines and two lengths. You can do a mid length or a duster length. It does not have any closures. I have sewn this pattern twice and both times I made the hooded cardigan. And I think that it's just a really simple sew it has a very simple oversized easy fit. I think that it's a really versatile pattern because of the different neckline options. You can make it in a variety of different knit fabrics. The first time I chose to make it, I used a merino jersey. And the second time around, I used a thicker French terry and both of them turned out really well. I think that providing options for the hood or the shawl collar or a plain neckband, you can make a variety of different cardigans with just this one pattern. So I think that it's nice and versatile for the price. The second layering piece is the Pattern Emporium Grab a Cup of Cardi. It comes in sizes four to 30 and the cost is 11 USD. So I just made this one recently. I've made two versions. There's a cropped length, a mid hip length, and then a long length. And both times I made it, I sewed the cropped length. You can choose to either add the sleeves or leave them off. And the sleeves are a little bit fuller. They're gathered into a cuff. So it's nice and easy to layer them over thicker tops. And it also has optional pockets that you can put on the front. Now this does have buttons on the cardigan, but lots of people have chosen to leave off of the buttons if you don't want to do the buttonholes. I did go ahead and put the buttonholes on both of my versions and I didn't have any problems. The instructions are really very good on this and they're very clear. So I highly encourage you to try out this pattern if it's something that you're interested in. I think that it's a really good one. The next layering piece is another pattern emporium. It's the With Love Poncho. It comes in sizes four to 30 and it costs 11 US dollars. Now this is incredibly easy to sew. I would say that this is perfect as a true beginner pattern because it's mostly just one piece. Like other than the neckband, the body of the garment is just one piece and you just need to hem it pretty much and that's it. There are different necklines that you can try so you can add a little bit more variety. You can put on pockets or you can leave them off. There's different length options. You can have different sleeve lengths and you can choose to sew up the sides and kind of create a sleeve or you can just leave it open. I do think that it is a very, very nice, simple, beginner friendly piece to sew. And it's also really great for styling. It's something you can just kind of throw on when you're feeling chilly at home or if you just need an extra layer on like a spring day, I think that it's a really good pattern for that. Now, if you are new to indie patterns and you're not quite sure about this whole taping it together thing, I do have a video full of tips and tricks on how to make it a little bit easier right here.